this fly was banned in the 1800s for being too successful. To start this pattern, we'll grab some black UTC, secure that to our hook shank, snipping the excess free. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook and grab a yellow goose feather. We will select about a quarter inch segment and measure it to be about half our hook shank in length. Fix our feather in place on the back of our hook and continue to secure it, wrapping forward towards the head of our fly. This will help us build up a nice uniform body. Snip the excess free and then grab some gold wire. We will secure this to our hook shank at the head of the fly and wrap it back towards the tail. We will then grab some silver tinsel, tie it into the back of our fly, and wrap forward towards the hook eye. Once complete, we will wrap our silver tinsel in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. We want to make sure that each wrap is slightly overlapping the last. Secure. And snip the excess free. We will then begin to wrap our gold wire in open spirals towards the head of our fly, taking care to make sure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front and behind and helicoptering the excess free. We will grab a black rooster cape, we'll select a single feather, stripping the excess free and tying it onto the head of our fly. Snip the excess stem free and begin to hackle our feather around the head of the fly. It will take about four to five turns. Secure the excess and snip free. Brush your hackled feathers backwards and use your thread to wrap back on them slightly. This will give them a nice brush back look. We will then grab a peacock sword, select two sections of feathers, and tie them onto the head of our fly. The length will roughly reach the end of the tail, and we will secure it tightly in place. Snip the excess free, and grab some more yellow goose feathers. We will tie these onto either side of our fly, securing tightly and snipping the excess free. Whip finish, and paint some UV resin over the head of our fly. Once happy, we'll fix in place, and this is a variation of the Great Alexander Fly. If you'd like to win this fly, we're going to be giving away in our Discord community. The details will be in the description below. Many believe that this highly successful fly pattern should be banned. To start this pattern, we'll grab some UV orange beads, inserting it over our hook, and use a lighter in order to adhere it to the top of the fly. Be sure to lift it in an upward motion, as to not close your hook gap. Additionally, be sure to fill this with a UV resin or super glue to make sure it stays in place. We will then grab some egg yarn. Here I'm using a pale white and secure that, taking thread wraps at the head of our fly. We'll snip it to length and pull away any loose fibers. We will then whip finish to hold everything in place, seat the knot, and snip it free. Finally, we will brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. The pattern is so simple and requires very little skill that many believe it should not be used in fly fishing. However, eggs are a natural forage and extremely productive at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This fly is so successful that it was actually banned from competition fishing. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, attach that to our hook, and insert a lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place. Secure it to the hook shank, and helicopter free. We can then build up a small thread dam behind our thread and wrap to the head of the fly. We'll grab our mop material, and attach that to the head of the fly. We'll do so by taking several tight thread wraps to fix it in place. Once complete, we'll snip it to about two hook shanks in length, snipping it free by rounding off the tail. Next, we'll grab synthetic peacock and hair's ear dubbing, blend these together, and create a dubbing noodle around our thread. We can then start wrapping this around the head of the fly, we want to build up a fairly prominent base of dubbing, so if you run out, you can always add some more. Once complete, we will brush it out, giving it a nice buggy look. Secure by whip finishing, 
and snipping your thread free. The mop fly is a very easy and extremely productive pattern. If you want to catch more fish, today's fly is for you. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC in fluorescent pink, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue to the bend of the hook, grabbing some pink squirmy worm material. We'll secure this tightly to the back of the fly, wrapping towards the bead. Flatten the body out as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much because we'll be covering it in our next step. Once we're happy with how the tail looks, grab a second piece of squirmy worm material, tying it on the body of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping your squirmy worm material in loose spirals. Pulling the material too tight can result in it falling apart after the first fish. Once you reach your thread, secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will then whip finish to hold it in place. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies below and if you would like to support the channel and purchase a few, you can visit my website. Fish love boobies so much that many fishermen would like to see this fly banned. We'll start this pattern with some fluorescent yellow thread. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and snip the excess free. We will then continue wrapping into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we'll grab some chartreuse marabou, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Take further securing wraps up the fly, folding the marabou over, wrapping our thread to the head of the fly. Fold your marabou back over and secure it tightly in place. This will not only help further secure our marabou, but also build up a body. Snip the excess free, using your thread to cover any remaining marabou. Next, we will grab some chartreuse brassy wire, secure this to the hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Return your thread to the head of the fly, and grab some pearl mylar. Once again, securing it tightly to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. We will then use our thread to build up a uniformed body, finishing at the head of the fly. Next, grab your mylar and start wrapping it in closed spirals up the fly, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. at which point we will secure, taking several thread wraps over our mylar and snipping the excess free. We will then grab our chartreuse brassy wire and start to wrap this up in open spirals towards the head of our fly. Try to maintain an even distance between each wrap. Secure and helicopter the excess free. In order to add some shine and durability, we will paint over our body with some UV resin, securing it with a UV light once happy. We will now grab some black marabou, measure this to equal the length of our tail, securing it in place just behind the eye of our hook, leaving a bit of room for our next step. We will snip the excess free and lay down a thread base in order to hold our boobies in place. Grab some round booby eyes, here I'm using chartreuse, and secure these to the head of the fly by using your thread to wrap tightly in figure eight patterns. With the boobies secured in place, we will use our whip finisher, taking several turns to prevent the fly from falling apart. Seat the knot tightly and snip free. This highly successful fly pattern might trigger some fly fishers. To tie it, we'll start off with this Vivis body quill. Secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Wrap back up towards the hook eye and grab some vinyl ribbing. Here we're using a nymph size in red. Secure a small section to the hook shank, ensuring that it's resting on top of the hook. Continue to secure tightly just on top of our thread wraps. Once complete, grab your whip finisher and secure everything in place. Snip the excess free and grab some UV resin to paint over the body section. This will increase the durability and give the pattern a little bit of shine. Once happy, secure in place with a UV light 
and pinch the vinyl ribbing together to give it some character. And this is a pattern I like to use to imitate small freshwater worms, as well as little red midges. And the great thing about it is it can be trimmed to length on the water. This is a simple guide pattern that is likely to offend some, but works surprisingly well out on the water. You can find it on my website listed below. Today we're going to be tying a controversial fly. To start this pattern, grab some ultra thread in red and attach it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and insert a lead free wire. Secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. We'll then wrap back well into the bend of our hook and grab some pink crystal flash. We'll select about four strands, secure it tightly to the back of our fly and snip the excess free. Further secure it to the hook shank and wrap back up towards the head of our fly. We will then select a white and pink microfiber cotton, secure this to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards our crystal flash. Once complete, we'll make sure that there's no exposed fibers showing, building up a nice red base. We can then fold over our cotton, use our fingers to create a small loop, and secure that tightly to the hook shank, using our thread to secure it in place. Wrap back on it slightly, and then we'll continue up the fly, repeating this process. Create a loop with your fingers slightly larger than the last, secure, and continue to the next loop. We will make this one roughly about the same size, secure it tightly, creating one last loop that is slightly smaller than the previous, securing it tightly, and snipping the excess free. We can then whip finish, securing everything in place, snip our thread free, and add some head cement or UV resin to add some durability and shine to this pattern. And finally, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Love them or hate them, egg patterns are extremely productive, and I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts on this in the comments below. This productive pattern was banned for use in competitions, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll secure some white thread to the hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll prevent our bead from spinning around the hook by inserting some lead free wire, securing it, and helicoptering the excess free. Lay down a thread base until you reach your hook point. We'll then grab my new favorite mop material called Galaxy Mop. This particular one is in tan. Secure the mop material tightly to the top of your hook shank, and if you want it to be extra secured, you can add some super glue. Snip your Galaxy Mop to length and wrap your thread to the head of the fly. Here, we'll fold over our thread, create a loop, and wrap it back towards the mop material. Return your thread to the head of the fly, leaving us with this dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a laser dubbing in tan. Insert it into our dubbing loop and spin it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll wrap our dubbing up the body until we reach the thread. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Finish it off by brushing it out to give it an extra buggy look. And this is the Galaxy Mop, one of my new favorite variations of the Mop Fly to Fish. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one.